Hi, everybody. I just saw Dr. Barry Awe and Aaron's Got a Minute YouTube live video that they put out yesterday on June 29th, 2023. And I thought it was absolutely amazing. So I saw some additional information that I wanted to support archaeologically. So archaeological evidence supporting their video of the 2023 time frame and more so the 2023 rapture time frame. Um, I'm not saying it's set in concrete, but... I do think this uh, provides additional strong information to support their video from yesterday. So I wanted to get this out quickly and I'm back <laughs> uh, now that I have an external hard drive. Well, I have one, but and get this out to you quickly. So without further ado, I'll go from here. So here is an aerial view of Moses altar right at the base of Mount Sinai, which is to the right of this picture. So the, you have the two corrals that are in this uh, chevron shape. Then it goes down from two to one. And then there's a, a huge boulder. And then there's two other rooms outside of that so i'll go into that a bit more but yes mount sinai is in saudi arabia uh, as most experts believe along with myself and uh, that is from galatians 4:25, which reads so in 4:25, galatians 4:25. so in galatians 4:25, you have the two covenants but in verse 24, and these are symbolic, for these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar, verse 25 specifically, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, which is modern day Saudi Arabia. And also in Exodus 20, Verses 22 to 26, so almost like 2022 to 2026, uh, the law of the altar. So I'll just start in verse 24. The Lord had requested Moses to make an altar. So in verse 24, an altar of earth you shall make for me and you shall sacrifice on it burnt offerings and your peace offerings your sheep and your oxen in every place where I record my name I will come to you and I will bless you and if you make me an altar of stone you shall not build it of hewn stone for if you use your tool on it you have profaned it nor shall you go up to the steps to my altar that your nakedness may not be exposed on it. And so that's the boulder that you see that is the altar portion of Moses' overall altar. And it is made of an altar of stone and not of hewn stone, meaning they use tools to build, to like carve it out, to uh, make it so it's not smooth. It's just a rocky altar and that's what you see also at the base of mount sinai and here's a close-up view of that boulder that is the altar of the lord that they did the sacrifices to and over here they found ashes of remains of animals there in particular sheep and oxen so that's another thing that corroborates that this is in fact Moses altar so you might be asking why am I going into all of this pertaining to Dr. Barry Oz and Aaron's got a minute uh, video yesterday well I'll go from here and I'll show you those details 
So here's the top plan view of that same uh, Moses altar with the dimensions on it. And the source here is Glenn Fritz uh, Exodus Mysteries uh, that he put out in 2019. But these are sheep foals. One is eight feet across, the other seven feet. You have 22 feet at the entry. There's an entry here. Then there's 62 feet, 54 feet, and then 20 and a half feet, eight and a half feet across for the boulder, 10 feet for this one room, and nine and a half feet for the other room. So these dimensions will be important as we go forward. And I'll be showing this slide quite a bit, but I'll add information uh, that pertains to uh, their video that they put out yesterday. So starting with this right wall, which is 22 feet across and 7 feet on the inside for this one corral and 8 feet for the other one where the entry is and it's pointing due north, this bottom right corner is dated to so this lower right corner here is dated to when the sun first enters the constellation of Pisces in the Maseroth. So you end up with 37 days that the sun spends in Pisces. So you have the 22 days, which is the length of the entire wall, plus 15 days, which are the two inner corrals, which is the wave sheaf offering for all 12 tribes. I think in an earlier video by Dr. Barry Ah, he had the six tribes did their wave sheaf offering, then there was a Sabbath, and then the remaining six tribes did their wave sheaf offering, and then I believe there uh, is one season change in there uh, for the spring equinox that brings you the 15 days, but anyways, this is the full 37 days of Pisces. And then you get to this corner right here, this upper right corner. And that is the start of the constellation of when the sun enters Aries. It spends 25 days in Aries, another 37 days in Taurus. And that's where you get the 62 days and this being 62 feet. Then it goes to being in Gemini for 37 days and Cancer for 25 days. And, um, oh, I might have that off, 27. You get 54 days here for those two constellations. And then excluding the boulder, you have 20 and a half plus 10 plus 9 and a half, a total of 40 days. And that's how long the sun spends in the constellation of Leo. And I thought I'd throw this in here as well. The 15 days, I mean the 22 days for this wall, plus 15 plus the 62 brings you to this point right here, which is around the time of the summer solstice. And that actually is seven Sabbaths, 49 days plus 50 days, 99 days in total, and that brings you to Shavuot. So here are the associated dates for each of the corners for Moses' altar. You start at that lower right corner again, and that's when the sun first enters the constellation of Pisces, and that's on March 19th. It goes 37 days and you end up at this corner being March 20, I mean, April 24th. You go another 62 days. That brings you to this uh, corner right here, which is June 26th. You go another 54 days and that brings you to August 19th and incidentally, the total of 37 plus 62 plus 54 equals 153 days. And you know that's 
the same as the 153 day uh, I mean 153 fishes then you move on another 20 and a half days that brings you right before the boulder being September 9th and that was the day that the man child was born from the constellation of Virgo uh, back in 2017 this doesn't include the uh, the boulder in this instance you move over another 10 feet which would be 10 days which is September 19th and it concludes with nine and a half days later being September 27th and 28th and that's the first day of the Feast of Trumpets I think Tishri 1 but there are instances in which you do include the boulder and instances where you don't and this is one where you don't but uh, maybe they can help explain when you do include them but I'll show that as well so here's the instance in which you do include this boulder so you end up with again the sun entering Pisces on March 19th Nissan one I put the uh, the Hebrew date so April 24th Gregorian Nissan one June 26th is Savan two you go out the 54 days August 19th which is day 153 again like the 153 fish catch that is the third of Av, which is the Feast of New Wine. You go out another 22 and a half feet or 22 and a half days. That brings you to September 9th. So that falls between the 22nd and 23rd of Elul because it's got a half. This one, you add the 8.3 feet or 8 feet, rounding it down. So 8 plus september 9th brings you to september 17th which in this instance becomes tishri one and that's with the boulder included doing the i guess the blood sacrifices and then you add 10 feet in this one and it again ends up on september 27th being in this instance tishri 10 or the Day of Atonement, and it excludes the 40 days in Leo, which is Judgment. So you have the 62 days, starting from Nissan 1, plus the 54, plus the 8 with the, the large boulder that you've seen earlier from the aerial view. And that's 124 days total and excluding these days which add up or these compartments which add up to 40 days you end up with april 24th is nissan one the third day of av which is the feast of new wine on august 19th tishri one then the feast of trumpets ends up being on september 17th and then yom kippur on tishri 10 the day of atonement on September 27th so there's a difference between including the boulder and not including it but it all concludes on September 27th and again uh, Dr. Barry may be able to explain why the with the feast of wine that the there may be a blood sacrifice offering on that day as well which I'm not familiar with then Dr. Barry also mentioned that the constellation of Cancer, uh, which is the crab, represents heaven. And that being the sheepfold, which these corrals do hold in both of these compartments. And then maybe it goes down to one and then the sacrifice takes place uh, top of the, the altar of sacrifice, the boulder. But it does have the shape of a crab and with its claw hook here. So I superimpose that with the constellation of Cancer. 
Here's a cropped view of cancer, uh, which is the sign of heaven, as Dr. Barry Oz said. And he said two of the uh, stars were uh, signs or named after um, donkey's asses. But I actually found um, this instead. So the main stars in Cancer in the Maseroth are Tegmin in the tail of Cancer, which is the brightest one, which means the sheltering or hiding place or holding. Then there's the uh, Praesipi, which is the means the catafold, catafold, which is the cattle fold and is a bright nebula which is now called the beehive uh and then there's also al harem <laughs> i'm slaughtering it so there's also al himarine which means the kids or lambs there's al kumbainin which means in hebrew which is the large uh lower claw which is the sheltering or the hiding place uh, sorry, I'm mispronouncing these words. And then there's Mal Al uh, Alaf, which means the assembled thousand, or can and that star is also called Al Harmin, like earlier here, which means the lambs. So when you combine that, it's the cattle folds, including kids and lambs, binding together and encircling, sheltering one who possesses them and the great multitude so that's all being the stars that are within the constellation of cancer and cancer also represents heaven and when you superimpose the constellation of cancer on top of the moses altar you do see the claw hook and the two corrals and um, I'm sure you could align it a little bit better than I did but you can see how it does superimpose on top of Moses altar with the constellation of cancer so also near the base of Mount Sinai or Jabal al Makla was this mystery marble stone with an inscription Fain inscription on top of the stone, which Dr. Glenn Fritz thought was the markings appear to be composed of Greek or Arabic characters. He found someone that was uh, either a Bedouin or someone that spoke Arabic, and they thought that it was showing uh, these characters instead, which is they thought it was 1415 and i believe that was the 40th year 1415 bc in which joshua and caleb left the sinai wilderness so i think that's further corroboration although it's seven years later than what dr barry and aaron had stated yesterday in their video but I believe when you include the seven-year battle it brings it to the year seven years uh, afterwards which would be 1408 BC I'll show that next so if Joshua and Caleb did indeed leave the Sinai wilderness as that in uh, marble stone inscription has it was the year 1415 BC. Then there was a seven year battle in the promised land and Jericho being encircled seven times. And that brings you to uh, seven years later, which is 1408 BC. You subtract it, brings you to 1408 BC is when they crossed the Jordan River into the promised land at that time and scattered in front of moses altered shown the unhewn cut in front of mount sinai were 11 scattered white marble pillars 
They believed there were 12 representing the 12 tribes, but 11 were still left of the foundation stones that were there. And that foundation stone that has the date 1415 was made from the same marble that was from the scattered marble pillar stones representing what they believed were the 12 tribes of Israel. So going instead with the 1415 BC date minus seven years of battle, bringing you again once to 1408 BC instead, then based on Dr. Barry Ah and Aaron's Got a Minute uh, video that was put out yesterday with the 3,430 years with the seven times 70 times seven, and I'll put a link to their video below. They had entering the promised land, the 1408 times the seven times seven times seven, 3,430 years. And that brings you to the year 2023. So um, I don't have any evidence for the 1401 in the year 2023, but I do have hard archeological evidence from Moses altar site and that marble inscription that has the year 1415 BC minus the seven years of battle that brings you to 1408 BC with the 4,000, I mean, 3,430 years, that brings you to the year 2023, this year. So also not very far from this same very site of Moses' altar at the base of Mount Sinai, they said was the possible golden calf worship altar of Aaron. This isn't a natural feature. It's actually flat on top. And you can see on the side that of this flat plateau altar that there were a lot of bull petroglyphs that were on this. And then in particular, one right here, they said that cattle was not indigenous to the Saudi Arabia uh, area near Tabuk, but on that petroglyph highlighted that it was more reminiscent of the Egyptian bull altar or uh, Egyptian bull worship that was on a tomb in Egypt, remarkably similar to a painting on an Egyptian tomb with the petroglyph of the bull altar near Mount Sinai. And here's a better view of that uh, same bull petroglyph compared to the Egyptian painting on the tomb and the flat plateau that was on top of this altar, believed to be Aaron's altar with the golden bull or golden calf that they put the golden calf on top of. So I wanted to get this video out quickly right after they put out their video as I saw a lot of archeological evidence that back up all the stuff that they showed yesterday minus the 1415 BC versus 1408 BC, but they both end up being with 1408 BC. I just don't have archeological evidence for the 1401 BC uh, ending up with the 3,430 years added to that concluding in 2030 AD, but rather based on Moses' altar in Mount Sinai, which strongly supports a rapture in 2023. So, however, I do think, although there's no archeological evidence, I do think that it can be inferred that it is in fact 2030 as well based on the information that they presented yesterday so i'll end with this chart again of moses altar which shows the dimensions 
along with the associated Gregorian dates and the Hebrew dates, this corner again being Nisan 1, going over to this double corral edge, which is the third of Av, which is the Feast of New Wine, which Dr. Barriad talked about in a few previous videos. And it concludes at this wall on 10 Tishri, the Day of Atonement. And that's when you include the boulder of sacrifice that I believe is mentioned in Exodus 20, 20 uh, verses 22 to 26. And the start date on this lower edge being when the sun first enters the constellation of Pisces on March 19th. So there are two versions of this. I can't fully explain it, but I do see it that there's one when you do include the boulder of the altar of sacrifice and one when you don't and you just go straight on with ignoring the eight feet of the boulder width. But in this case, the last 40 days of judgment, which is the elbow of the crab in the Maseroth, is excluded in this particular timeline. So anyways, uh, if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them as best as possible. I will include their link again to their video from yesterday, as well as other sources that I took the uh, Moses altar and the altar of the golden uh, calf that I got from other places. They have wonderful pictures and more information. So I didn't include it in the video. So anyways, I hope you have a blessed day and I will talk to you soon, but please get saved because you can tell that the time is ever, ever, ever so close. We're already the latter part now of 2023. And um, so please get saved and come to the Lord because this is, I think, a high watch. I won't say exactly. And like Dr. Barriott and Aaron uh, said that if we go beyond this time frame, then we'll have to reevaluate it or as well. But I think this is pretty solid information given the fact that this is actually Moses' physical altar at the base of Mount Sinai, in my opinion. So, all right, I will conclude here and have a blessed day. Take care.